Hello and welcome to week 35, our final week in the book of Acts. We've gone through 27 chapters of the Greek uh, of the book of Acts. So wherever you're coming into this video, if you want to learn Greek, by all means, you can learn it by watching these over, over 200 videos uh, going through the Greek of the book of Acts. Uh, and so let's go ahead and dive in. Paul and his compatri compatriots have survived the shipwreck and they've washed ashore on an island that when they were on the boat, they couldn't quite make out what island it is. And now we're going to find out. So, and having been rescued, uh, then we recognize that the island is called Malta. So Malite uh, is the Greek for Malta. Theta Epsilon, what do you know about Theta Epsilons? Eris passive, and the unt tells me that it's an Eris passive participle. And the S tells me that it's nominative masculine singular going with the subject, we, because it's nominative, it goes with the subject. So having, having because it's heiress, been, because it's passive, rescued, uh, because it's dia sozo. And having been rescued then, uh, we, we then, we then recognized that the island is called Miletus. This is a present passive indicative, third singular. It is called, is, because it's passive. Uh, this is from Epigonosco to recognize. Uh, we've lost some letters. We've lost the iota of Ginosco, so we're not in the present stem. I just gano that this is Arist. So Epigonosco. We, re we realized we realized that the island is Malta. Arist, uh, active indicative, th uh, first singular from Epigonosco. Okay, I know it has a long vowel before the ending, which kind of threw me off for a second, but Gano is the stem of Gnosko in the heiress there. So Epigonosco is the word. Verse 2, and the, the barbarians, da 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 da. Uh, this doesn't mean they're uncivilized. This is a way, uh, in fact, I may have played this up too much in the podcast, but barbarian, uh, it would not be a good translation because the sense is these are, these are not the, the um, they're not Greeks. Uh, they're, so if you divide the world into a chart, as I said, uh, you have you have uh, Jews and non-Jews, Jews and Gentiles, and among the Gentiles you have Greeks and barbarians. Now, I I, I assume that Paul might, I think Paul would include Romans as the, I don't think Paul would call Romans barbarians, or Luke, I don't think Luke would call Romans barbarians. So these, these are just not, um, uh, they're not Roman citizens, I assume. They're islanders. That's the way the new NIV translates it although that really isn't what it says. Um, that's a nice way of referring to it, I think, uh, the NIV is used. So, and the Islanders, by the reason why this has hoy, uh, when I see hoy all about by itself, I think relative pronoun, because the relative pronoun is basically a, a noun ending with a rough breathing mark and an accent. But the, re but the reason this has an accent is because of te. Te doesn't have an accent. This is the article hoy. There's, there's no accent naturally on hoy here, and the barbarians. The reason why it's taken an accent is because the freeloader, te, when you have two enclitics next to each other, well, this is a proclitic because it comes before a word. When you have a proclitic and an enclitic next to each other, the first one is forced to pull up an accent so that the stress has to be somewhere. And so that accent's deceiving. It's not a relative pronoun. It's the te is making hoy take up an accent. So the the... The non-civilized uh, people, the, the non-Romans, the non-Greeks, the barbarians, the islanders, uh, they, were, they were holding forth um, not the, the happening philanthropy, not the usual, not the normal generosity, in other words. Um, this is from Tuncano, which means to happen. Um, and so this is a kind of idiomatic way of saying they were unusually kind. Uh, philanthropy, of course, uh, probably we shouldn't translate it that way because these aren't rich people. This is talking about ordinary uh, man-loving, person-loving, humanity-loving kindness, uh, the happen in kindness. This is uh, Eris because of Tuncano. It's lost some letters. But it, uh, active females carry Uzis, so it's a feminine participle. So it's an Eris active participle, accusative feminine singular. Okay. Now, the barbarians were holding forth, 
This is the imperfect of par echo. Uh, they were, for third person plural, not the normal kindness to us. For having touched the fire, well, that's an idiom for having lit the fire. No, no. Having lit the fire, uh, this is hapto. Hapto, yes, hapto, which means to touch. But again, this in this context, it means to light, to light the fire. A C is the key to a hidden sigma. Hidden sigma alpha tells me it's aorist indeed, and aorist active in participle, because the aunt is an active participle. So aorist active participle, nominative masculine plural from hapto. For they were lighting, having lit the fire, they were receiving us all uh, because of the rain that was coming down and because of the cold. This is the this is the aorist. It's lobbing you an aorist. The aorist of pros lambano, uh, third person plural. It's middle because amenu ta amatha es the anta. So it's a uh, aorist middle indicative third plural from pros lambano. Uh, because the rain, the standing rain. This is from ephistemi. So the st in there tells me it's histemi. Uh, this is the perfect participle form. Uh, you can see that because of the the on it. Participles have thes on it sometimes. So the rain, the having stood rain, the having come down rain. Um, I've just memorized that really as a perfect of, of his to me. Um, and I know the other forms uh, and it's not them. So there's no sigma alpha from the heiress, for example. Um, uh, anyway, I, I'm sorry, I, I know it. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so I'm not quite sure how to tell you how to know it other than to memorize the principal parts of histemi. Yeah, the principal parts of a verb in Greek tell you the basic chassis on which uh, the various forms of that word are made. And so this is the, um, the perfect chassis. Okay, uh, the, the fourth principal part, as it were, of histemi. Okay, verse three. And Paul, having gathered a certain multitude of sticks, um, and seeing the multitude of sticks. Uh, this is a genitive absolute, Paul in the genitive, participle in the genitive. Sustrepho, uh, C is the key to a hidden sigma, hidden sigma alpha, so it's aorist. And my aunt is an active participle, so this is an aorist active participle. Os is the genitive masculine singular participle ending, archonantos, genitive. Uh, Paul, having gathered uh, a certain multitude of sticks, indefinite pronoun, and having placed them upon the fire, Theta epsilon is the root of tithemi. So this is epi, epitithemi. Uh, and this isn't a aorist passive. If, you're, if your first thought was, oh, aorist passive, that's a good thought to have. However, uh, then there would be no word here because epi is a preposition. That's the root uh, and, and it goes straight to the ending. So in this case, the root of tithemi happens to be exactly the same as what is added to the stem to form the aorist passive. So you could easily confuse this with an, er with an aorist passive, but it's not, uh, it's just the word. It's that this wig doesn't come off. So theta epsilon is a wig that comes off the ending of other words in the aorist passive. But this is actually the real hair, epitithemi, it's the stem. So this is an aorist uh, um, active participle, uh, genitive singular. It goes with Paul, Paul genitive absolute, part of the genitive absolute, Paul having placed upon the fire. A viper. You've wondered, you've wondered what this word was, echidna, uh, a viper from the heat having come out, uh, latched onto his hand. Uh, so this is uh, active female participles carry uzi. So this is a aorist, because the elf, aorist active participle, uh, um, nominative mass feminine, nominative feminine singular. A viper having uh, come upon him from the heat, latched upon his hand. This is a C is the key to the hidden sigma. So we have a hidden sigma epsilon, which is a third person singular uh, past tense ending. Okay. Um, yeah, latched. This is kathapto, related to hapto up here. Latched upon his hand. Uh, aorist, active, indicative, third singular. Okay, let's keep going. We're almost, we're halfway there. Almost. And as the islanders saw uh, the, the beast, the, the asp, or I mean, sorry, the viper, uh, hanging uh, from his hand. Hey, look, guys, I got a snake on my hand. Uh, it's better, uh, I don't know if that's better than a snake in my boots. But anyway, um, uh, having latched, uh, I believe this is aorist, aorist participle, 
Uh, there's no sigma alpha here because this is, mm, it's a liquid verb. Liquid verbs have it in their contract. They don't do sigmas. So having latched, the beast having latched from his hand, uh, so this is aorist active participle. Men are passive or middle participles. Um, and it might be um, uh, a deponent. Let's find out very quickly. How quickly can he find it? Nope. Cathapto. Uh, I would go with, um, uh, no, this is crem, cremomnumi. Uh, so it's middle. It's a middle. We'll go with middle and translate it actively. Hanging, having hung, uh, having hung uh, the beast from his hand. They were saying to one another, reciprocal pronoun, imperfect of Lego. They were saying to one another, certainly, completely, a murderer is the man this. This man is certainly a murderer. Uh, whom, having been rescued from the sea, justice does, has not permitted him to live. Um, which is a natural, uh, a natural conclusion for them to draw, given their worldview. Uh, given their worldview, uh, they have a sense of fate, of fatalism. Uh, it would be their perspective that everything happens for a reason. Um, now, of course, there's some Christians uh, who have baptized that sentiment and said, God, everything happens for a reason in God's plan. Um, by the way, if you're a Wesleyan, that's a very Calvinist perspective. Um, it is not uh, a Wesleyan-Arminian perspective that everything happens because God has determined uh, for it to happen for a reason. Um, Wesleyans believe that God gives some free will uh, to the to human beings uh, or empowers them to have free will. And so not everything happens uh, for a reason. Not everything is micromanaged uh, from a Wesleyan Arminian standpoint. Although I will say historically, an awful lot of Wesleyans have not seen the disconnect between a sense of micromanagement by God uh, and um, the, a, a sense of, of, of uh, free will to, I mean, not, not, uh, not just blanket free will, but God empowered uh, free will. And so that's a point of discontinuity. I, I think I've, I've, I have uh, read something my grandfather wrote. He was thoroughly uh, Wesleyan Arminian in terms of free will uh, in that sense. And yet um, he would, would have believed that God was micromanaging kind of everything that was happening. And so uh, it's kind of a, a continuum as to how much determinism. So de if you have determinism and free will on opposite ends of the spectrum, uh, there are Arminians at various points in the middle as far as how much God actually uh, determines. But anyway, um, I would say sometimes snakes come out and bite you, and sometimes it's Satan-directed, and sometimes it's God-directed, and sometimes a snake saw some food or, or, or was actually was afraid of, uh, of uh, what would happen and, and bite in fear and so, or in instinct. Uh, anyway, I'm, I don't, I, I'm quite happy to believe here that God did direct the snake uh, in order to bring this miracle to Scripture. So I have no problem with the idea that God had directed this snake or that God allowed Satan to send the snake. Uh, I don't have a problem with anything like that. Um, I, we just don't know. My, my preference is, is that God allowed this to happen so that it could show up in the book of Acts and we could talk about it 2,000 years later. But anyway, um, little tangent there. Uh, this man is certainly a murderer whom, having been rescued from the sea, a uh, theta epsilon here. Now, the theta epsilon here isn't part of the real hair. Uh, it's not tithemi, because I have a root. I have sozo, the, the core of this verb. Dia sozo is the word. So the theta epsilon here does indicate that this is eris passive. It is the wig that comes off. Uh, and so this is eris passive. It's a, it's a participle, eris passive participle, uh, that... Uh, accusative masculine singular um, to go with whom um, uh, and why is this accusative because because justice did not permit him to live so the case of a relative pronoun goes with its function within its clause this is a relative clause all of this here and so the subject of the relative clause is justice dk um, justice uh, has not per allowed has not allowed Sigma epsilon, aristactive indicative. Uh, justice has not allowed uh, him uh, to live. This is the infinitive of zao, er, uh, present active infinitive. Um, him, 
although he was saved from the sea. So I would say this is a concessive participle. You can hear the word although. Although he was saved from the sea, justice has not permitted him to live. Um, and you can basically see that this should be accusative because it functions in the place of the him in that, in that sentence. Uh, so this is an aorist passive participle, um, accusative um, uh, masculine singular. Uh, having, having been saved, you might say, having been rescued, having because it's aorist, been because it's passive. Okay, verse five. Uh, on the one hand, he, therefore, having shook off the beast into the fire. This is funny. It's kind of, it kind of reminds me of Paul when he was stoned in Lystra. Uh, they, they were sitting there uh, standing over him thinking, Paul, he's dead. He's dead. And then he just gets up and goes into town. Here, he gets bit by a snake and just kind of uh, shakes it off into the fire and keeps going. And they're watching him now. They're watching him now. What's going to happen to this guy? Xe is the key to a hidden sigma. So we have a hidden sigma alpha. This is a aorist. It's an aorist uh, active participle from apotinazo, I would say. Uh, can I find it quickly? Ep epitinazo, epitinazo, uh, epitinazo, epitinazo, uh, two sigma. It's a two sigma word. Um, not a high frequency word, let me say. Uh, having, you don't shake off snakes that often in the New Testament. Having shaked off the beast into the fire. Um, he suffered no ill. Uh, this is Pasco, the aorist of Pasco, one of the dirty dozen uh, irregular uh, second aorists that you memorize when you do beginning Greek. Uh, he suffered no ill. Uh, aorist act indicative third singular. Okay, they're watching him still. Something's going to happen to this guy. Verse six. And the ones who were awaiting him about, uh, so, and the ones awaiting were, uh, they were expecting him about to be swelled uh, or to fall over suddenly dead. Uh, where's a verb here? Uh, hard to find a verb. I'm not seeing a full verb here because this, uh, 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 okay, maybe this one, prostoke. Um, okay, yes, okay, this is the verb, I think. And they, because it kind of looks like a participle, to be honest, although I think the accent would be, would it be a circumflex here, I think, uh, prostokeo, it would have crashed into the own of the participle if it were participle. So this is, this is um, because the accent, I know that this is an imperfect. Actually, there's, there is the augment. If it were a participle, it would not have an augment. Okay, so you've seen, you've seen some thought process here. This is an imperfect active indicative third plural from prostokeo. And they, they were awaiting him, they were expecting him, to be about, in present infinitive of mellow, to be about to swell, uh, this is from pimpremi, uh, not, a, not a frequency verb, not a lot of swelling in the New Testament. Uh, so this is a, a present middle infinitive, uh, expecting him to swell up or to fall over, present active infinitive, suddenly dead. That's what they're waiting. Oh, this is gonna be good, he's gonna fall over. Um, but uh, after much time, them awaiting, genitive absolute here, and beholding and watching. So this is the, the quote unquote subject of the genitive absolute is the noun or pronoun, pronoun here in the genitive. And then you have participle in genitive. Here are two participles in the genitives, in the genitive. Uh, my aunt is an active participle. Both of these are present active participles. Uh, genitive masculine plural. Okay, they're waiting and looking at him, expecting him to fall over. Um, and uh, having come, nothing having come to him out of place, uh, nothing unusual happening, changing their mind, they were saying him to be a God. He must be a God. Um, so they were saying him to be a God, that's indirect discourse. And these part, all these participles are telling us about, about it. Uh, this is a present participle of ginomai. Uh, this is the aorist participle of metabolo, uh, metabolic to change, changing rate, metabolic rate. Um, ball with one L is Eris, so it's an Eris participle. Okay, well, that was fun. We had snakes today, uh, vipers on a beach. Uh, watch the, or listen to the podcast if you wanna hear me talk about a possible connection between uh, these verses and the, end, the longer ending of Mark. Have a great day.